Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made the two seamless pattern swatches I used to create this project on my artboard in Adobe Illustrator. These swatches were made with designs that have strokes on their outer edges, so they had to have a bounding box added to them to make them seamless. I'm going to show you how to make the designs, how to make the bounding boxes, how to turn those designs into swatches and apply them to shapes, and then scale and rotate the swatches for the looks you see here. Now let's move to another document and I already have four colors selected for the project. I downloaded these from color.adobe.com which is Adobe's free color website. You can download hundreds of colors and if you happen to be an Adobe Creative Cloud subscriber you can actually download those colors directly to your library and that's really handy. I'm going to be using the swatches panel so I'll go ahead and go up to window down to swatches and grab that. I'll click on the swatches tab, drag and drop it over next to the layers tab and then come back to the properties panel and we'll start working on our design with the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M. I'll click on the artboard to open the rectangle dialog box and type in one inch for the width, tab down and type in one inch for the height and say OK. Then I'll get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, and I'm going to apply color number one and notice Illustrator has applied not only the color fill but my five point black stroke which is what I'll be using for this design. I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'm going to drag the square to the right. I'll hold down the option key to make a copy and the shift key to drag in that same horizontal line. And when I see the vertical and horizontal lines and the word intersect, I'll release my mouse and then take my fingers off the keyboard shortcuts. The reason I saw those lines and the word intersect is because I have smart guides turned on and you'll need to turn yours on as well. Go up to view down to smart guides and click here or you can use the keyboard shortcut command U. The default color for smart guides is actually a bright pink but when I'm working with colors where the pink doesn't show up I change the default color so I can see it better. To do that you go up to illustrator down to Preferences, over and down to Smart Guides, and you can see the color area right here. Just click on the pull down menu and you can choose whatever color you want and then say OK. But you'll have to restart Illustrator before that color change will take effect. Now I'm going to select both of my squares. I'll start dragging these squares down. I'll hold the Option key down to make copies and the Shift key so that I stay in that same vertical line. And when I see my lines and the word intersect, I'll release my mouse. Now I'll select the top right square, get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, and apply color number two. Then I'll speed this up as I repeat that process to apply colors three and four to the bottom squares. Then I'll get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V and select all of the squares and group them keyboard shortcut command G. Well the design's complete but when I dragged it into the swatches panel like this, let me show you what happened. I'll get the rectangle tool keyboard shortcut M and drag out a rectangle and apply the swatch and you can see I've ended up with thick lines around each of the pattern repeats and that's not a terrible look but it's not a seamless pattern swatch because with the seamless swatches you don't see where the design begins and where it ends. So I'll delete that rectangle and I'm going to get the zoom tool keyboard shortcut Z and zoom into this square and get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V and select it. And what you see is these thin red lines going through the center of all of my strokes. That's actually the outside boundaries of each of my squares. What Illustrator does with strokes is it takes the center of the stroke and it places it along the outside edge of the object that it's on. So when we have a five point stroke, we end up with two and a half points on the inside of the object and two and a half points on the outside of the object. Now with the help of smart guides, I was able to actually overlap these so you don't see an extra thick line here on the design. But when I send this design into the swatches panel, each of these designs going next to each other 
will end up with a 10 point stroke here. So what we do is create a bounding box to tell Illustrator where the boundary needs to be. To prevent the thick lines around this design, we're going to have to draw the bounding box around the center of the stroke that goes around the outside of the design, and that can be tricky, but I'm going to show you an easier way. I'll zoom back out, keyboard shortcut command zero, and then click on the artboard to deselect our design. Since I know I want to include the part of my stroke that's on top of the squares and I want to exclude the part of the stroke that's on the outside of the squares, basically I need to create a bounding box that just goes over the boundary of my squares and that should take care of eliminating that overlap. And the easiest way to see that is to move into the outline viewing mode, keyboard shortcut, command Y. Here all we see is the shape of the objects and we don't even have to worry about the strokes. So I'm going to create my bounding box and it's got to be invisible which means no fill color and no stroke. So I'll get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, I'll go over to the properties panel and remove the fill color and remove the stroke color and then we'll start in the top left corner and make sure you see the word anchor for perfect placement. I'll click down with my mouse and drag to the bottom right corner and when I see anchor I'll release my mouse. So we have our invisible bounding box but it's got to be placed behind the design. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut shift command left bracket and now it's in place. Let's move back to the preview mode, keyboard shortcut command Y, and I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and select the design and the bounding box, and group it, keyboard shortcut command G. Now I'll open up the swatches panel, and I'm going to drag and drop our design in here and create another swatch. Then I'll get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and drag out a rectangle, and we'll apply this second swatch and see what we have and what a difference our bounding box has made. No more thick lines around the designs. We have a perfectly seamless pattern swatch. I'll delete this rectangle and get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and select our design and hold down the option key and make a copy because we're going to use this for our second design. First we're going to resize it. I'll go up to Object, Transform, Scale, and I'm going to type in 50% for the uniform scale and say OK. Next I'll get the rotate tool, keyboard shortcut R, and I'm going to rotate this little square until color number 3 is pointing up to the top. I'll begin dragging down and to the right and hold the shift key down so my object snaps at every 45 degree increment. And when I see color 3 pointing up to the top, I'll release my mouse. Then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and select this smaller design and the larger one. Go to the properties panel and click on horizontal align center and then vertical align center. Now all we have to do is add the circles on the corners. I'll get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and click on the artboard to open the ellipse dialog box and type in 0.75 for the width, tab down, type in 0.75 for the height, and say OK. Now I have a circle with no fill and a five point black stroke. I'll get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V and I'm going to place the center of my circle on the top right anchor of my design. So I'll drag it down here and we see we have an intersection so I'll release my mouse and then I'm going to hold the option key down to make a copy and the shift key and drag down to the bottom right anchor and then we'll do the same thing to the left bottom anchor and the top left anchor. Now select all of the pieces and get the shape builder tool, keyboard shortcut shift M and hold the option key down and drag over the pieces that I don't want and then get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V and click on the artboard to deselect the design. Then I'll select the top right corner and get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, and apply the color that's opposite it on the square. Then speed this up to repeat the process for the other three corners. 
Now I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and select the entire design and group it, keyboard shortcut command G. And this design is complete because the base of it started out with that bounding box. So I'll move over to the swatches panel and drag and drop our design in and we have our swatch. And I'll wait to test it until we use it in our project. I can actually even delete this since I've added it to the swatches panel because if I ever need it again, just come over to the swatches panel and drag it out and here's another copy. But we're not going to need it so I'll delete that and come up to the layers panel and I'm going to hide all of these color samples and click on the design layer to make that an active layer. The first thing we'll do is create our background. I'll get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and click on the artboard to open the rectangle dialog box and type in 15 inches for the width, tab down and type in 10 inches for the height, and say OK. Then I'll go to the Properties panel and click on Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center. I'm going to remove the stroke and then move to the swatches panel and apply our first pattern here. And then we're going to resize this. I'll move up to Object, Transform, Scale. And I don't want to scale the rectangle, just the pattern, so I'll uncheck Transform Objects, and then I'm going to change the uniform scaling to 10% and say OK. Then I'll rotate our swatch by going back up to Object, Transform, Rotate, and I'll type in 45 degrees and say OK. Then I'll get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, then I'll click on the little area of workspace I have left to deselect my background, and get the Rectangle Tool again, Keyboard Shortcut M. This time I'm going to format my rectangle before I create it. So I'll move over to Properties, remove the fill color, and for the stroke I want a black 50 point stroke, and I'll click on the word stroke because I'm going to change the alignment of my stroke. Now earlier I explained how the alignment of strokes is right through the center of the stroke, but we can actually change that. For my frame, I want the stroke to align to the inside of the object, so we'll click this, and I'll click to close that out. I have the rectangle tool active. I'll click on the artboard to open the dialog box. I'll be using the same size as my background, so I'll just say OK, and then click on Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center, and our frame is in place, but it's still a stroke, so I'll have to convert it to an outline before I can add a swatch to it. So I'll go up to Object, down to Path, and choose Outline Stroke. Then move back over to the Swatches panel, and I'll apply our second design here. But we're going to scale it down a little bit. So I'll go back to Object, Transform, Scale. I'm going to type in 35% and say OK, and that's looking better. But I'm going to try to line up the pattern. So I'll get the Direct Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut A, and I'm going to hold down the tilde key, and that's the key right next to the number one key on your keyboard. And I'll use my arrow keys to move up and down and sideways until I get the pattern lined up just the way I want it. And I think we'll leave it there. Now while it's still selected, I'll move back over to the Properties panel, and I'm going to add a three-point stroke to my frame, and then click on the workspace to deselect it, and that's looking really nice. Next, I'll get the Ellipse Tool, Keyboard Shortcut L, to make the circle. I'll click on the artboard to open the Ellipse dialog box and type in six inches for the width, tab down and type in six inches for the height, and say OK. Then I'll come to the Properties panel to center it. I'll click on Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center. In my sample project, I cut the circle in half. And I'll do that again. I'll get the Scissors tool, Keyboard Shortcut C, and go to the right anchor. And when I see the word anchor, I know I'm in the right spot. And I've got to be precise here so the cut across my circle is even. So I'll click on the anchor here, then move to the left anchor and I see the word anchor, click here. Now I get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and with the top half selected, I'll go to the swatches panel, 
and click on our first design and apply it here. It looks like my line is straight across the middle, but I'm not liking the transition between these two patterns. And so I'll get the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut A, hold down the tilde key again, and I'm going to use my up arrow key, and I'm going to just move my pattern up until I get a black line across there. And I think that's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to do the same thing down here on the bottom pattern. I'll select it, hold down the tilde key, and use the down arrow key to nudge the pattern down and until I get it right where I want it. I think I'm going to leave it right there. And then hold the shift key down and select the top part of the circle. Group these, keyboard shortcut command G. And then hold the shift key down to drag my circle down in this same centered position on my artboard. Now, not related to seamless pattern swatches, in the original document I showed you, I also had a text box and text. This happens to be Charcuterie Deco 60-point font. I downloaded that from Adobe Fonts, and then I used a traditional Arial rounded 20-point font. And then I went into the Appearance panel, and I added a couple of things that I wish I had time to show you, but I'm going to leave a link to a tutorial at the end of this video, and you'll be able to check those out. First, I went in and I created an editable drop shadow for my text. Then I created a double-stroked shadowed frame for both my text box and for my circle. And you're really going to want to understand and learn how to use those techniques, so check out that video. Now, as far as this tutorial is concerned, I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. I believe you're now going to be able to take any design that has a stroke around the outside edge and turn it into a seamless pattern swatch. Before I close, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell because I don't want you to miss any of my future tutorials, and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.